Hi everybody, Peter of England. Um, today's video is a very important one, not that the others aren't, but for the times that we live in and are living through, I thought today I would emphasize a point that many people seem to be missing concerning the videos that I'm posting on the, the, uh, the nature of the person, the nature of divorcing yourself from the state, and the freedoms that that will give you in the up-and-coming months and years as the, the tyranny of the United Nations, the New World Order, the WEF, the WHO, uh, and all the alphabet agencies start to rain down their, their uh, restrictive covenants on you so that they, in effect, put you into uh, a state of almost permanent lockdown, not only physically but mentally. So what I'm finding is, I've seen more and more uh, articles recently on uh, people who are being uh, arrested, detained, questioned, invited to go down to the police station to discuss, for example, social media posts. Uh, there's one circulating at the moment. Uh, I think it's uh, an ex-military man, uh, a veteran. He posted or reposted a, uh, an emblem of, a, of the flag. I'm not sure whether it's the, uh, the, the flag of the United Kingdom or whether it's the, the, the St. George's Cross. But that led to so-called um, police presence at his house, whereupon uh, him trying to explain that he hadn't committed any offence. In fact, him trying to show or ask repeatedly, where is the victim? because it's victimless crime that they're going after you now for, then without a victim, then thousands of years of common law get thrown out of the window under the bus, and they can rest, arrest you and uh, imprison you and fine you and restrict access to, to banking and to um, uh, travel, uh, passport documents, visas, all on an arbitrary basis. And what an arbitrary basis means, that they decide unilaterally to impose something on you. Well, that being said, these guys, um, for example, one of the individuals, um, when he asked what offence had he uh, committed, the police uh, officer, if you can call them that these days, quoted something called in the United Kingdom, the Communications Act of uh, 2003, Section 127, which in effect really is a, a, a general catch-all uh, so if anybody posts something on social media that can cause offence, uh, anxiety, uh, what were the other uh, expressions, uh, annoyance or inconvenience to another individual, then he's committing an offence. So what I'm going to do with all of this legislation now to emphasise that there is a way through it. Yeah? I'm going to show you the way, and I've showed it in these previous videos on the, the status of a person. And for all of you out there who seem to be fearful, who are afraid, who do not want to go on the street and demonstrate, who don't want to take any action, for example, like the, 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 the people that follow, um, say, Tommy Robinson, um, the English Defence League, um, they are more overt in their activity, and for those people who don't want to go that way, um, I suggest this. But I also suggest this way for people like Tommy Robinson and all his crew to embrace this, because what we need is strength in numbers. And how these numbers come, then, is by maybe a, a more covert action, a more, po uh, uh, sorry, um, a more, um, not, a more of a passive action. So that's what I'm encouraging you to do. It's a type of creative dissent through passive action. And the passive action will unpick all of these laws, these statutory instruments and acts that have been passed upon you in a particular way. Now, we've got um, the, the, uh, a piece of legislation which was recently um, brought or inaugurated, should we say. It was brought in on April Fool's Day um, 2024 but had been on the books since the 23rd or 26th of April uh, 2021. And that's the, um, the hate, I think it's called the Hate Crime and Public Order Scotland Act of 2021. That date, 
comes to my mind, and I think, well, hadn't the Scottish Parliament uh, better things to be doing in the height of the so-called COVID pandemic uh, than passing laws related to hate crime? It sat on the statute books for over three years, three years, 10 months plus, until they decide then to, to launch it. One of the first uh, so-called threats to its v uh, validity came from J.K. Rowling, who basically was questioning the role of gender assignment and the, uh, the trans mov movement for the benefit or empowerment of women. And accordingly to this legislation, that had the merits of a potential hate crime. So these, what we have here is the government, the government of the world, using uh, nuclear weapons, going to war, using anti-personnel devices, using cluster bombs on civilians, shooting people dead with drones. And at the same time, if you not only are in possession of a toffee hammer for breaking toffee, but you just draw a picture of a toffee hammer and send it to someone, then that's deemed to be good enough for them to arrest you and potentially imprison you. Yeah? But the media exemptions, for example, in the Communications Act 2003 in the UK, uh, allow the broadcasting media to do everything, anything they want. So where you can't show a flag, you can't make a statement because you might be offending a group of Muslims, a group of Jews, a group of etc., then they can publish and show anything to, to cause anxiety, annoyance, fear, depression upon you, but you can't do anything contrary. Yeah? So that's something that, that really needs uh, addressing. So we've got also something in the UK, I've made a few notes here, Public Order and Policing Act in the UK. Um, all of this can be undone and unpicked in a way I'm going to show you now. But before I get onto that, uh, I just want to say that this um, Hate Crime and Public Order Scotland 2021 Act the Communications Act of 2003, which is a, a catch-all area for preventing you posting anything on social media that might cause offence. One of the main things that people are missing here is without a victim, there cannot be any of these offences. It's victimless crime and under the laws of defamation and slander, for example, you cannot defame or slander a group. You have to have an individual claimant, and they would call it on that a person uh, that needs to bring a claim. A group cannot bring a claim. A government body or unincorporated um, entity cannot bring a claim. So how then can the Crown Prosecution Service, a part of the government, bring claims on behalf of the government against you when there is no complainant? What they have in for in London, I think Sadiq Khan recently recruited over 200, it might be 250 police officers who were just ceremoniously sworn in as part of his extended budget. And all they do is sit in various hangars or offices and look through the internet, through the social media, from Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, uh, wherever it, you can imagine, looking for people who've made postings that they can potentially go after. Have they not got anything better to do than that when, you know, Europe is on the brink of Armageddon um, and the Middle East looks like it could go up uh, like a bottle of champagne or a champagne cork at any time? So... That's the predicament that you find yourself in, and it's getting worse. So you need to go to area52.life. You know, need to go to the services section there. You need to look up declaration of divorce. You also need to look up clausula rebus sextantibus. Yeah? These, these, this law will help you to get through to where you need to go. And through 2024, you must renounce this assumption and this personification that is applied to you that you are assumed to be a person. If you now uh, look under every single piece of legislation that is current in the United Kingdom and in uh, any other Commonwealth country or in, um, we would say, uh, you know, the United States, 
it all refers unequivocally to the status of a person. Okay? If you look at what's called for the UK law, I'll use this as an example, and for all these people uh, that are in other parts of the world, uh, you can look up, look up the relevant um, sections in your various acts, whether they're criminal acts or taxation acts or uh, uh, any other type of uh, legislation, statutory or otherwise. You need to look up the status um, under what's called a person. Okay? So, for example, in the UK, it's the Interpretation Act, 1889 sections 2 and sections 19 which elaborate on the definition of person and how that applies to all acts from then on so if you are a person it applies to you the income and corporation tax act the theft act the fraud act the hate crime and public order scotland act the communications act every single act the road traffic acts they all apply to you because you are not rebutting the assumption that you are a person. And the person or personage aspect of also what's called baratry comes from the birth certificate. That's where it starts and that's where you've got to make it end. And how you do that and these people who've been arrested, for all of those out there who want to post something like a flag or want to say about glorious Britain or who want to post an Easter egg or want to post a depiction of Christ, whether it's on a cross or not, you have the freedom of expression. Do not let them take it away from you. Yeah? Just because they've got some troll cell of Muslims somewhere claiming that they took offence where you can't have their identity revealed to you because it's for their security and protection just means what we have now are like in um, pre-1939 Germany we have the Gestapo, the Geheimnisstaatspolice, we have the secret services arresting you on arbitrary charges and it's the same as Stalinist Russia, it's a catastrophe. So you've got to start now being clever. You've got to try and do something. Use creative dissent. So let's start and give you the antidotes to all this nonsense. Okay? This needs to be done and you need to do this. So, for example, one of the basic things that you can do, a benicio, off the bat, is revoke or renounce any association with what's called Article 6 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. What that basically says as is that everyone has the right to be identified as a person everywhere before the law. Okay? So it's a trick clause. They are telling you you will be identified and that will then affect your rights. So don't do that. Don't go for that. Um, I then mentioned go to area52.life, go to the services bar, and go down to declaration of divorce. Divorce yourself from the state and the apparatus that is controlling you. It's no good, obviously, if one person does it because they'll come along and laugh at you and say, oh, yeah, we've heard all that. But if numbers of you, if groups of you, if Tommy Robinson and his legion, for example, decide or wish to do it, then do it. It can't do you any harm. It can only help your progression to keep you out of the court and to come along with a new mindset to say, in effect, fuck this, we've had enough. Yeah? Our turn now. This is what I'm trying to portray. And what I'd like to do now is give you some other additional uh, information. And what that will be is under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, yeah, there are three... Uh, 1893 major articles that you need to look at. Okay, and I'll read them to you now because this is what's called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Yeah, it isn't the Bavarian one or it isn't the regional local one, it isn't the one for London and the home counties only, it isn't for the metropolitan police zones only, it's universal. And all the signatories um, of the United Nations signed it after the war. And it was, uh, was co-chaired or led by uh, Elena Roosevelt. 
the, 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 the wife of Teddy Roosevelt, on the belief that these rights were inviolable and should never be stopped or challenged or threatened again due to the heinous nature of what the, the previous world wars had done. So let me read something to you now, and this is your defense. This is your defense to any policeman that tries to close you down, to any organization that tries to say, you can't express yourself, you can't post that. Just say to them, give them the finger and give them Articles 18 to 20, which I'm going to read to you now. Article 18 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights Officer says as follows, everyone has the right to freedom of thought, conscience and religion. This right includes freedom to change his religion or belief and freedom either alone or in community with others and in public or private to manifest his religion, his belief in teachings or practice or worship or observance. Quite clear. Article 19 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Officer. Everyone has the right to freedom of opinion and expression. This right includes freedom to hold opinions without interference and to seek, receive and impart information and ideas through any media regardless of frontiers. Quite specific. Article 20, everyone has the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and association. So for the lady who was standing within 150 meters of the abortion clinic praying to God and the police came and arrested her because she was in violation of some uh, um, restraining order, totally unlawful, illegal. And the police have got to be made to know this. So I would write these uh, articles down, either put them on a card or just memorize them and read them to anyone that is trying to violate your basic rights. Article, uh, so yeah, so Article 20, everyone has the right to freedom of peaceful assembly and association. And here's another big one which gives you a lead in for the Declaration of Defor Divorce and Clausula Rebus Sextantibus, which overrides Pacta Sunt Servandum. That means promises must be kept. No, they're not necessarily to be kept if they're only one-sided through Adesian contracts where it's all good for them and no good for you. You need to have a change of mind. Article 20, uh, subsection 2. No one may be compelled to belong to an association. Okay, clear. No one. You cannot force anyone into becoming a trustee. It has to be voluntarily done. You can't compel anyone to be a member of a, an association, a group, or a government that you don't wish to be part of. And I will give you the definition of association. A group of people, government, who work together, government, in a single organization, government, for a particular purpose, government. In effect, it's the club. It's a club that you're not in, but it is the club they use to beat you over their head from breakfast till bedtime, from the womb until the tomb, and you don't have much of a say in it. So wake up, get on board, get in touch with us, either come through the various email links that are in the bottom of this uh, or through area52.life or reach out to us in some other way for us to come and do a maybe a presentation locally for you in a village hall or wherever and we will give them uh, something to remember because you've got the law on your side and what we need here is a waking up in a passive way because we will hoist them on their own petard. We'll blow them up with their own bomb. And how we do that is we use the legislation that they've created to entrap you, and God, therefore, gives us a fact or a remedy that though their attempts might be foolproof, they think, they're not God-proof. And the easiest way of undoing it is a self-declaratory nature of making your 
identity something other than they claim that you are. But we need to do it in numbers. People like, uh, uh, and I know my previous video was on a completely different topic. It was on the, the idea of Satanism, Luciferism, the Church of Thelema, the Masonic Orders, and all of the police, all of the politicians, all the Whitehall gang, the mandarins of business who are all uh, Masonically sworn in. You've got to find a way through that. And the only way to do it, when all of these people crack and find out they were sold a false bill of goods, the lies of Lucifer, they always do what? They always turn to Christ, they always turn to God, and they do it either by becoming priests or pastors or announcing that they found God. Russell Brand recently has just been baptized, so I hear in the Thames, probably hoping and praying this time not to Lucifer and all the people in the media who got him into uh, the, uh, the Luciferian uh, rebellious chants, but now to probably try and save his ass from what is possibly the inevitable rundown of the clock where his sell-by date, uh, sell date becomes expired because he served his purpose and to keep us all preoccupied, um, we have to have sacrifices thrown at us to show, well, look, even those big, big hitters out there, it gets them eventually, so poor old little me, I might as well just go back into my mouse hole and collapse and die. So anyway, do something about it. Um, that's it. Thank you.